want to um, give you some guidelines on evaluation and management coding. So if you'll take your textbook, the step-by-step -step textbook, and we're looking in chapter 10. So if you'll go to page 280, and um, on page 280, the first thing that it shows you here are the three factors of E&M coding. Um, I realize that E&M coding is very difficult. Um, you will need to spend more time on this section um, probably than any other sections in this course. You will be dealing with E&M coding um, in any medical field because anytime a physician is involved you will have E&M codes. So it's very important that you um, get familiar with this section and um, know how to do these well. They are time consuming, they are difficult, um, they are detailed. So you will need to take your time with doing this part. On page 280, the three factors of E&M coding, those are place of service, type of service, and patient status. Um, now the place of service you're going to need to know, are you in a physician's office, are you in a hospital, a nursing home, um, the, the patient's home. Um, you just need to know where the services are taking place. For type of service, you could have an office visit if it's in an office. Um, you could have a consultation, which is when one physician or provider requests um, another physician to do um, a consultation on a patient, usually for a second opinion. Um, you also could have admission, which is going to be inpatient in the hospital facilities, um, or you can have newborn care um, with infants. So those are the types of services. You need to know which of those in order to um, code with evaluation and management coding. And the last thing is a patient status. Um, and on that, you need to know if the patient is a new patient or an established patient. Um, if the patient has never been seen by this physician before, then it is a new patient. If the patient has not been seen by this physician, or another physician in the same practice within the last three years, then it is also considered a new patient. Um, established patient would be one that's been seen by this physician or another physician in the same facility within the past three years. Um, the other part is outpatient or inpatient. Um, an inpatient is going to be one who has been formally admitted to a healthcare facility. So if they've not been formally admitted, then it is still considered outpatient. So those are things you're going to need to know in order to code with E&M. Now if you'll flip over to page 283, there are some various levels of E&M codes and in order to learn how to select the level of coding, you're going to need to um, look at some key components. And if you'll look on page 283, those um, main, three component, main three key components are history, examination, and medical decision making. Um, and this information at the bottom of the page and on the next page is very good information to help you select. But at this time, I want you to go to your CPT manual, and in here, we're going to be looking in the guidelines for evaluation and management services on page 9. And on page 9 in your manual, there's a section that says instructions for selecting a, um, a level of E&M service. Um, and there's some very important information here. Um, it's very similar to what's in your textbook, um, but you know, both sections will help you, your textbook and your CPT manual. Um, and this gives you here, um, of course, it gives you seven components, but those key components, again, are history, examination, and medical decision making. It also gives you counseling, coordination of care, nature of presenting problem, and time. Um, and it gives you some information here on how to determine the extent of the history how to determine the, the extent of the examination and how to determine the extent of the uh, medical decision making or the complexity of that. Um, so this information in your uh, manual is very good information that can help you with that. Also on page 10 in your CPT manual, it um, gives you some guidelines here for selecting the appropriate level of services. Um, and on this, it gives you a list on number one, it gives you a list of certain services where all of the key components are required. Now if you'll look on the opposite page, on page 11 in your manual, for instance on a 99202 it tells you here under the bullet points an expanded problem focused history, an expanded problem focused examination, and straightforward medical decision making. Now on those three things with this being a new patient, if you'll look back to page 10 under number 
one on that right hand column, it says office for a new patient is one of those services listed in that paragraph. All of the key components must be met in order for you to code that. So in order to code a 99202, all three of those bullet point components must be met or exceeded um, in order for you to code a 99202. Now back to page 10, if you will look at the second paragraph there, number two, this tells you um, some services that only two of the three key components are required. And underneath one, underneath that, one of those is Office for Established Patient. So if you'll flip over to page 12, and for instance, we're going to look at 99214, and it has three bullet points there, a detailed history, a detailed examination, medical decision making of moderate complexity. So those three things. Now in this case, because this is a code for an established patient office visit, only two of those three must be met. So as long as you have a detailed history and a detailed examination, even if your medical decision making is not moderate complexity, you still could code that 99214 because you do have two out of the three elements. Okay, and back to page 10, number 3, it also gives you um, a scenario here where sometimes time may be considered um, for E&M services. Um, and each of, each of your um, E&M services gives you, um, underneath where it gives the description, it gives you um, typically how much time would be spent with the patient for each of these services. There are times when a um, physician has to spend more time than what would typically be spent for that service, yet you don't have the key components there that let you code a higher service. So in that case, you would want to use codes to cover for that time, um, which is going to be under the prolonged services, um, and those are on page 28. And I will be going through um, one example of prolonged services in another video, so be looking for that information. Um, again, you will want to study pages 9 and 10 specifically in your CPT manual as well as starting at page 283 in your textbook to help you learn how to select which level of E&M service. Um, if you um, get this part of it down, you're going to be dealing with this all through the rest of the course. Even in the sections where we're dealing with radiology, laboratory, surgical, all of the other coding, we still at times are going to have E&M services because an office visit may be involved or um, a patient being admitted to the hospital may be involved. So it's very important that you get these E&M codes, um, be familiar with them, get them in your mind, and um, be familiar with how to select which level of service.